<laughs> okay, so Hamza and it, it is pronounced Hamza, correct? Yeah, Hamza and Chelsea. And Chelsea. How are you guys doing today? Good. We're good. Thanks for having us. Of course, of course. Um, I just finished watching the Institute. So I'm curious, I have a number of questions for you. Um, my number one question is, did you guys come up with this idea yourselves? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's, um, you know, it's um, an individual. It's a story that I came up with, you know, based on some activities and actions that happened with me. And, uh, you know, it's it's hundred um, percent original, I guess. Yeah, although everybody has their influences. And uh, luckily, the movie's about babies, so having one chime in now and then actually works perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, inspiration. So, did you guys sit down and were you? Well, let me ask this: Were you guys already married to uh, before you? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, did you guys sit down and kind of? Uh, Bouncy's idea for this project back and forth or was one of you did one of you bring it to the other I sort of came up with it and was playing with it and discussing it and then I brought it to Chelsea and uh, you know basically she was the first person to read the script and give me notes and you know I incorporated those into the initial and the, you know the secondary drafts so when it came to prosthetics, you know, with no spoilers, but when it came to the different prosthetics in throughout the film, um, did you have a specific uh, like director or uh, prosthetic art artist on scene or, or on yeah. set? Uh, yeah, we had were, we had designed it together. You know, one of our producers had um, brought in a prosthetic artist that he really loved, and you know, we grew to love her as well, Beatrice. Um, Sniper, you know, she is a great prosthetic artist um, based in the area, you know, the New Jersey, you know, tri-state area. And when I sent her the script and kind of worked on uh, some of those uh, renderings and imagining. So she was there from pretty much the initial pitch, the initial screenplay, you know, while we're developing the project. So, yeah, so she, did great. she was, she actually, she helped a lot with the design too, you know. Yeah. We yeah. wanted to give her, um, we wanted to give her some artistic license and we're, we're glad we did. <laughs> yeah, some parameters and then like, you know, see what let the artist create. Yeah, so I, that's what I was curious about was like, you know, all the eyes, like, is that something that you guys said that you wanted or is that something that they had put in the prosthetics artist had, had added? Well, in? yeah, no spoilers, but um it was a idea that I think came from certain of our motifs that we went through with the, th you know, that you kind of can see with the film, um, certain uh, sensibilities, you know, like an aquatic sensibility and, and, uh, and then, you know, we of course uh, did some CG on top of the practical effects. Right. So then was this, obviously you had a pretty minimal cast. So I'm curious if it was done uh, during the height of the pandemic or like after it kind of had shut down because there was a scene at the dinner table where they had mentioned, uh, you know, everybody's healthy or something, something about everybody being able to get together. So I was curious if that was a reference to COVID or if that was done prior to that. It was, um, it was, it was almost at the peak of the pandemic. I think, um, I think it was like maybe five or six months in and um, things at that point had gotten just slightly better where um, filming was like allowed to take place. Although like most um, even like big budget films were choosing not to. So, um, you know, like it was, it was, it was a little bit better, but it was still pretty much, you know, before the vaccine, before, um, you know, it was, it was still pretty, prevalent and anxiety causing. <laughs> yeah, we um, were planning to shoot before all that happened. And then COVID kind of came around and sort of caused some production issues, some funding issues, you know, a lot of complications that were added to it. And um, we discussed it with our production team. And, uh, you know, we gave like everybody sort of a 30% haircut. 
and cut a you know a certain segment of our budget you know for marketing and then uh, decided to go for it um, with you know controls. We basically had our own bubble, um, and I had done some drafts that really really incorporated COVID, right? Because it happened, and then I'm like, well, we should I really incorporate this as part of the reason why they're you know so free and happy to leave you know their New York existence and so on. And I wrote that, and you know it was like. It wasn't my original story, right? I felt it was kind of like a be like glomming it on just to kind of take advantage of some you know topical timely event. So I decided to deprecate it. Um, but you know, it did bring up the fact that these guys are all in like a medical facility, and so they are tested, they are all healthy and whole, and that made it more for the kind of general comfort level of the 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 characters instead of the you know kind of tying it into the storyline of COVID, although. It, probably was influenced by the, the, you know, those later sixth, seventh drafts that I was doing, you know, that are kind of like mulling over um, the COVID and the pandemic and how that would imp imp implicate, you know, uh, certain medical treatments and behaviors. And I remember when um, you were considering, you know, incorporating it, like, um, I think we had like some kind of round table and we we're like, no, this is going to be so temporary, you know, it's going to be like, you know, <laughs> that so. too. It is kind of a, it does sort of date you. <laughs> <laughs> and it feels like it's only been a year, uh, even though it's, you know, COVID-19. It feels like it's only been a year. So it's been a long uh, year, yeah. since you brought up, you know, six, seven scripts, um, and then you also had, you know, certain uh, restrictions during the pandemic, was there anything that you had to remove from one of you know your original scripts or anything that you weren't able to include in the film that you had initially hoped or planned to? Yeah, I mean it's uh, you know I think there's like you know there's three projects there's the script and then there's the production and then there's the edit you know and because of the time constraints and our budget and you know our certain limitations you know there were some like really key you know, kind of shots that I would have loved, loved, loved to take, loved to get, and was just not able to do it, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, you kind of have to sort of, you know, <laughs> swallow those things as an independent filmmaker and just kind of roll with the punches because you really, you know, you don't have the, the capacity to, to kind of get everything, those months and months of shooting, you know, you have your dates, you have your team, and you kind of running and gunning the whole time. So when it comes to gunning, um, there were obviously firearms, at least one firearm on set. I was curious if you had to just, I know this was um, filmed prior to, you know, the incident right. with um, Alec Baldwin, but I was curious if there's anything specific, uh, any hoops you had to jump through in order to do, um, use gun props on set not really you know we were offered um some like more real guns um by you know people in the team but we didn't really think it was necessary it was a custom firearm right it's not like a typical like i'm gonna you know like blow you away type of a weapon it was a very specific kind of like sort of medical you know it's a dark thing so we we needed to customize that anyways and you know a prop creator uh you know he built that from scratch and we didn't really have those complications that come with like you know like a real shoot 'em up type of uh, film where there's a lot of action a lot of you know muzzle blasts and where they try to have that kind of veracity but some of the guns now that you can get for those props are amazing they're not real they don't really shoot anything i don't know why anybody would need a real gun to be honest today but that's a, a whole different topic so with the um well, you know, no spoiler as, as far as where in the movie they are. Were you serious in saying that your child is in the film? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is, that's so cool. Did you guys go back and forth on whether you guys chose to do that or not? A little bit. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did a little bit like um, we've we've been very careful. We don't like to put them on like social media, you know, like sure. we just we just don't. You know, you know, like um, 
out of respect for him, you know, like, is he going to want that out there and everything? Um, but, you know, like we were all kind of making cameos and it really was like a family movie. So, you know, like, we, I mean, it's very brief. <laughs> so, so you, you guys had cameos as well? Yeah, yeah, very brief. Okay, okay. yeah. Um, so I then, before I wrap, I wanted to know if there's anything about the film that we didn't touch on or that other people don't ask that you would like to share. Mm-hmm. Anything? <laughs> that people don't ask. Mm. <laughs> this is a hard one. <laughs> well, you know, it, we haven't really delved too much you know we've talked about the story over you know multiple interviews we've kind of talked about the production we've also even talked about the inspiration and and so on um also uh, you know one thing i guess that we don't talk about enough is maybe some of the art design you know some of the art that we picked for the shoot you know it was like um the whole thing was done in you know kind of a very regional aspect so we had the locations were all in the catskills you know kind of this old vacation area you know close to new york city and the artists who you know populated the sculptures and the paintings and a lot of the you know the visual look of it was also a, a new yorker uh, but a long time catskills resident uh you know who whose work uh we you know absolutely fell in love with and you know his anthony bellatore we, you know thanks to his estate from his son philip we were able to acquire it and use it to stage the environment yeah, that was that was definitely like a treat for us, you know, like to like admire um, his work and then like have his son um, agree to lend us all of the work for the sets and some of the outdoor sculptures. Um, yeah, and it was great to have like, you know, the same artist be present, you know, th- you know, subtly throughout the scenes. Right, all the paintings, all of the sculptures are the same artist, even though, you know, it's over the 20 years of his his work. Um, yeah. that's pretty cool yeah. that's pretty cool because I remember seeing a lot of them um, I, I know that I said I was going to wrap but I actually have two other questions about the sure. film one yeah. is the drug sequence which was really cool um, did which you uh, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding um, the more drugs the better but uh, the, <laughs> drug, the drug sequence where obviously everybody's around the fire Mm-hmm. Um, did you guys going back, did you guys have any, uh, trouble deciding how you wanted to convey that or, um, how you wanted to film that? So, you know, there's a lot of substance use, you know, they're, they're taking some kind of like, uh, private, you know, customized remedies, if you will. So there, there is an element of that in throughout the whole film, um, But discussing the visual look, you know, I had always wanted to go much, much bigger. So the the visuals that you see that kind of inform the more hallucinatory aspects of it are basically kind of the only, you know, they were like the the, the maximum we could pull off. Whereas, you know, if I had a bigger budget, more time, you know, like a larger VFX team, et cetera, I would have gone much, much further. Now, that being said, I'm very happy with how it turned out. And sometimes a little bit of restraint can actually be a good thing. You know, like I don't need to make the, the whole film, you know, kind of a, a, an unreal journey. Um, much as I had originally experimented in the script and kind of thought of it as being much more hallucinatory. But the scenes that I was able to pull in and uh, the aspects that we were able to use gave the flavor of it without um, sort of, I think, limiting it to a very specific market, right? When you go too kind of um, visually extreme, I think it's hard for some people to watch. Whereas in this case, because we kept it sort of restrained and my, you know, uh, just sprinkles of it, if you will, I think a broader range of people can actually enjoy it. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, I agree with the, with the latter, just definitely as somebody who with lights and the way things are portrayed on screen, like with the epilepsy, that is something that is huge. So when you talk about like, you liked to take away the lighting and a lot of the bigger effects, I thought it worked perfectly with the way that it kind of 
it kind of appeared and and uh, did the I can't think of the word, but um, multiple uh, visions of the right, right. The, st- the trails the after st- images, yeah, the after images. Retina burn. <laughs> so then, not no. The, now that we're at the end of the movie, I am going to bring up a spoiler. I'm curious, it, how did you guys decide to to choose the fingers? Final effect. How final did you get, effect. How, yeah, yeah, the final that effect. That was very, very, very complicated. That took us months to do. You know, we were in post for like a year and a half. So that is a custom rig, you know, designed from, you know, a hand. And there's really not, you know, you, you can't get that from, you can't get those models. You can't get that animation. It was custom rigged to be able to evolve, morph, and then to be manipulated. So that's just pure, you know, like down in the dirt, like, you know, 3D. Um, so it's, you know, it's just really like, you know, hands-on artisan, like, you know, unique creation from our VFX supervisor. Did you ever consider uh, when you were putting the end together, like making it more expressive or did you always plan on just keeping the hand? So this again kind of takes us to the um, limits of our budget. You know, we, you know, we don't have, we didn't have the ability to make it a full, you know, um, body, you know, even the actual, you know, full figure himself would have been difficult to make photo real or, you know, to make real, you know, we shot in 6.5 K. So all those plates were rendered and created in 6.5 K even though on the market it's available only in HD, you know, we have a 4K DCP that, you know, we had a uh, screening with. So we have the real high resolution work. And so doing that with a much bigger, like, you know, with a, with a full figure, with a full face, you know, it requires a, a, a team that would be much larger. And really at the end of the day, you know, the statement that I was trying to make and, you know, kind of the, I don't know if people got this, some of my friends say they didn't really get it yet, but you know, kind of the homage to the Sistine Chapel and, you know, um, God and man, I didn't really need more, you know, I think the, the environment that second, you know, uh, virtual environment and the message that we're trying to convey of, you know, what's going on in that location was enough. And the actual, like, you know, close up on those, uh, the, the two hands were, was enough of a fitting uh, message to close with. Oh yeah. It was, I thought it was a pretty cool ending. I thought that it might fuel a after credit scene actually but i didn't see anything after <laughs> yeah, yeah but, I had to uh, <laughs> uh, um so that'll wrap on that is there anything you guys would like to plug you need a platform to say uh any future projects that you'd like to mention just our website you know the film is available everywhere your cable satellite uh you can check it out at institutemovie.com that's where all of the links are and if you want to see the live site of the actual Lands Institute. You can also reach it as a live website at lands.institute. Anything <laughs> to add, Chelsea? Are you guys just yeah. kind of a solid team since yeah. you're married yeah, and have a child together? <laughs> <laughs> Share a home. <laughs> Um, well, I guess the only other thing is if you enjoyed the film and you want to give us a good review on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, oh, yeah, we, we would love it. Yeah, we, we would appreciate it. Small films need big love. And, you know, Rotten Tomatoes and Amazon are, you know, two of the main platforms that will help us spread the message. So we really appreciate it. Definitely. And then did you um, did you have social media that you'd like to add? Before yeah, I yeah, we do. We have, um, you know, Instagram and Facebook and, you know, I have my Twitter account and I think you can reach them all from the website or, you know, just find us the Institute movie, you know, we've got, and you don't have a, I mean, your name isn't very common, like as someone with the same, with the same, similar <laughs> issue, your name is not very common. So I imagine it's easy to find you on social media. Sure. Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at Hamza.Zam. Or Headless Films, too. Right, right? or Headless Films. Headless Films is um, our production company. Yeah. Oh, okay. Specifically. All of our stuff under. Okay, cool. Um, uh, 